our hearts break whenever we learn of a fatality on the roadway. A pedestrian is dead after being struck by a vehicle Saturday night on State Road A1A in St. John's County. Police say the 69-year-old woman from Punta Gorda was crossing A1A at Euclid Avenue when she was hit by a passing sedan. Hampton Ray, community outreach manager for the Florida Department of Transportation, says the crash remains under investigation, but they're studying ways to improve safety at that intersection. This crash will be investigated by the Florida Department of Transportation after the Florida Highway Patrol or the appropriate law enforcement agency will conclude their investigation. So if improvements on the roadway can be made to enhance safety, additional studies may be warranted, or we can go ahead and initiate an improvement to the roadway if we find that there's deficiency on the roadway that can be immediately corrected. That will be done. Ray says traffic control devices called pedestrian hybrid beacons will be coming to A1A soon. This local news is a service of your hometown Toyota dealer, Beaver Toyota US1 St. Augustine, here to wow you. The Fort Mose Historical Society will mark the fort's place in the slavery freedom movement in an upcoming event. It's called Flight to Freedom 2023 and begins this Thursday. Park Service Specialist William McNaught describes what attendees will experience at the historical reenactment. You're going to see where the freedom seekers started out from the Carolinas, and you're going to see each different area that they had to stop on the way. So you go through it in the way that they did. You, you kind of see it through the eyes of those folks who made that trip, that harrowing trip. Some people have told us that it's life-changing. Their eyes are completely open to a whole different side of history. Most people don't know that the Underground Railroad ran south. They're going to learn that the trip from the Carolinas to Fort Mose was the first leg of the Underground Railroad. 1687 was when the first freedom seekers made their way down here. It was that right after that that Governor Montiano at the time set up the situation where they could come, be free. All they had to do was convert to Catholicism, and then the men would serve two years in the militia, and they would gain their freedom. Admission is free, and you can learn more about the event at fortbose.org slash flight dash two dash freedom. For St. Augustine's Local Morning News, I'm Rich Petschke. St. Francis House is a low barrier to entry shelter. We will accept anyone that doesn't have an open warrant or is not on a sex offender registry. Otherwise, all are welcomed at the St. Francis House and Port in Storm in St. Augustine. But Judith Dembrowski, the nonprofit's executive director, confirms. We will help you get housed. What we are not is a night-by-night shelter. Dembrowski says those who arrive at their shelter are facing a multitude of issues. Some of them are missing a little income or maybe they have had a falling out with their significant other or their roommates and they need just a minute to put their money together so they can get back into housing very quickly. We also serve those who have deep needs and few resources. Everyone at the shelter is assigned a case manager who helps them identify obstacles and build a plan that gets them on the road to self-sufficiency. She says their approach has been very successful. In 2022, we sheltered 404 people and of the 371 that exited, 42 2% exited to permanent housing, families, or a long-term facility of some sort. Dembrowski says an additional 150 people were served through the nonprofit's agreement with the city and street outreach teams directly housed nearly 50 people. With St. Augustine's Local Morning News, I'm Amy Cherry. And now you're up to date with St. Augustine's Local Morning News. I'm Rich Carroll.